So just a quick forward, uh, I'm by no means a hyperlapse or time-lapse professional. So forgive any of the nomenclature that I might get wrong. And at the end of this video, I'm also going to be giving away a grow light. So I'll let you know how you can be in the running for that grow light. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, I'm going to teach you how to do this. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a plant time-lapse for as little as 20 US dollars using the WiseCam V2, which is a webcam, and its time-lapse function. Let's get to it. So as you can see by this spread of cameras in front of me, uh, my journey through time-lapse has been fairly expensive. And I'm gonna share with you my mistakes so that you don't have to make them. So let me just walk you through my attempts at time-lapse so far. My first attempt at time-lapse was the combination of the stealth wardrobe and the compact flood and drain hydroponic system where I grew broad beans and pickling cucumbers in the stealth wardrobe compact flood and drain grow system. To film this grow, my friend actually lent me his GoPro Hero 7 uh, to use the time-lapse mode within the GoPro itself. Uh, however, although it gave me a really good picture quality, this camera really isn't made for long-term time-lapses as you need to keep it plugged in and charging the battery and it's powered through the battery, not through uh, the charge point. So the battery tends to overheat, and had I used this long term uh, for multiple time lapses, I fear that I would have fried the battery in this camera, and I really didn't want to do that as it's my friend's camera. So the GoPro really isn't a great long term plant time lapse camera. At that point, I actually started looking for time lapse cameras on the market, and the easiest way I could get a foot in the door to a construction time lapse camera, that is a time lapse camera which will construct the video for you, was this Brino TLC 200 Pro. However, this is a fairly expensive time lapse camera, and it's also only 720p, so it's HD, but the 720p version of HD. So it doesn't give a fantastic picture. However, some of the time lapses that I achieved with this camera were pretty decent. This camera has since stopped working. I had a battery explode in it, so I've moved away from it, but I did have a waterproof casing, which allowed me to use it outside to do outside time lapses on my NFT and such. So after I purchased the Brino construction time-lapse camera, I was looking to actually expand the amount of cameras I had. Uh, I was using the Brino and I was also considering using the GoPro again, but I really, I wanted to steer away from that. So I did a bit of research online to try and find cheap time-lapse cameras. And what I came across was these. This is the Wise cam v2 and it has an amazing time lapse function it's 1080p so it's full hd and it also has infrared so you can not only capture the daytime growth of plants but it also allows you to capture the night infrared spectrum so that you can see the movement of the plants when it's not under direct light, unlike these two cameras here, where I had to actually cut out the nighttime parts of the time lapse as it was just black. Here is an extreme example of where one of the lights I was testing actually failed. And you can see when the lights have turned off here, the plant starts to die. So, Seeing this night mode is extremely helpful. 
Now this camera actually has an outdoor sibling, which is IP67 water resistant, uh, and it comes in a bundle. So it has two 2600 milliamp hour batteries within the camera itself, and they're priced $19.99 and $49.99 respectively. That's in US dollars and that's to the US market. Now, for Australian viewers, I wasn't able to get my hands on the Wisecam V2 for less than $65. And this was a pre-release from Kickstarter. So I actually paid $120 for this camera set. And you can now get it cheaper, I believe. Uh, but you will pay a premium uh, because we live in Australia and it's so good to live here, obviously. <laughs> so I'm just in editing at the moment, but I just wanted to add one more thing. Uh, the Wisecam Outdoor doesn't have as good of a close range lens or sensor. Uh, so if you are doing close-ups, and I've found that this isn't really suitable even in a grow room environment, uh, it's made for outdoors larger distances. Uh, so if you're doing an indoor grow room time-lapse, uh, you're best to stick to the Wisecam V2. Uh, I've just found that it's much more capable with shorter distances and it suits the indoor growing purpose much better than this outdoor version. So with both of these cameras, you will need an SD card. So just a cheap 16 gigabyte SD card will do. Uh, the file sizes aren't enormous unless you're setting your time lapses for a short frame interval, but I'll get to that when we set up the camera. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to set up this device from the start so that you can achieve your time lapse. Now, plug it in, make sure you've got your micro SD in. So we're gonna go into our Wise app. So there's all my cameras set up uh, filming grows and we're going to add a camera, add device, camera, wise cam, then make sure it's plugged in. It is, it's got a yellow flashing light. Uh, press the setup. Ready to connect. Ready to connect. Sign into your Wi-Fi. scan your QR code and wait. Now, we'll name it Grow 3. All right, it's ready to go. So to start a time-lapse, we're gonna go into more. We'll go time-lapse. And this is where you can adjust the interval of your time lapse. So uh, we're gonna set it for as long as possible, which is about a month that lets you go. Uh, there we go. And we're also going to set the interval. Uh, so the interval will be in minutes. And this is where you collect information essentially. Uh, the more interval spacing you have, uh, the more information you're gathering. Uh, essentially, uh, there's three settings that I like to have. Now, the first one is 10 minutes. That gives you a fairly rapid time lapse of the plants and it allows you to see really long-term behaviors of the plants. Um, but for fast moving plants like uh, your pickling cucumbers where they have their tendrils that flap around a ton, uh, you really want to get it down to about five minutes or even three minutes. So it depends on the plant that you're time-lapsing, uh, how fast it grows. Uh, if you're filming radish or other fast growing plants, you're going to want to pull this right back down to about three minutes. And if you're filming long-term time lapses of say fruiting trees, uh, you want to pull that right back to 10 minutes. Now you can play with that yourself. Uh, these are just the three increments that I've found work for me. I generally have it on five minutes now. I did have it on 10, but you can slow down the footage in post-production when you're editing your video. So let's set this time-lapse. 
We'll set it at five. Okay. Set. And it's time lapsing. Now, there's a few settings that I'd turn off here. Uh, I would turn off event recording. You don't need that. Uh, it's just gonna take up space on your memory card. Uh, I would also turn off uh, continuous recording uh, because that will also take up space on that memory card. You just wanna record events only um, because you've turned events off. So that's not got anything else. Uh, you also wanna turn off your WISE logo. So uh, you can have it on or off, uh, but there's no point having it on, it just ruins your image. So that's set up and ready to go. All right, so you've set up your time-lapse in front of your plant, and it's now time to just let the plant grow. Uh, if you want to check on the time-lapse uh, halfway through, you can do that. You just have to go in, stop the time-lapse, and it will appear on your album within the app. If you don't know how to stick two videos together, uh, there are a ton of apps to do that. If you do stop the time-lapse early, you will get two separate videos uh, for the time lapse. You'll get the first chunk where you've stopped the video and then you'll get as many chunks after that you stop that time lapse process and then restart it. Uh, you can just stick those together with editing software. Now I use LumaFusion uh, as my editing software that I edit all my videos with. Uh, there's also something called Kinemaster um, and there's a ton of free editing softwares out there as well that are all able to be used on your phone. Uh, when you download those time lapses, they will download to the device that you set up the WISE cam with. So they will download to your phone or your iPad or whatever you've used to set up that device. You can then edit them on that device. All right, so that's the basics behind how I time lapse plants on this channel. Now it's time to show you how I get some of that parallax moving effect when I time-lapse some of my plants. This is the Edelchrome Slider V5 Long. On it, I've got the V5 motorized slide attachment and the Edelchrome Head 1 unit. Sliders are used to incrementally step the movement of the camera with the time-lapse. So as each frame of the time-lapse is taken, uh, this motor incrementally moves the slider one step in a pre-programmed track that I've set so that it moves the camera in such a way that I move around a subject or plant. This allows me to get really nice parallax whilst also turning movements um, by pre-programming the slide motor and the head one to move in unison around a plant subject. I do this through the Edelkrone app and I'm not gonna teach you how to do that movement today. However, if you're interested in me teaching you how to use these slide modules to incrementally time-lapse plant grows, let me know in the comments below. Um, I'd be more than happy to do a video on that. So if you are looking to jump from time-lapse to hyperlapse, moving time-lapse, uh, this is the slider one. Uh, it is probably my favorite slider. It's compact enough to move within a grow room and it's also extremely reliable. I've been really impressed with this unit. Dealing with the company Edelkrone, on the other hand, is a bit of a hassle. Uh, all of their prices do not include tax. So if you're shipping them from the United States to another country, they will not include the international import tax on these items. So you're gonna end up with a bigger bill even than when you purchase these items. And these items aren't cheap. I've spent a lot of money on these sliders and they're worth it, but I have an audience for my time lapses. Whereas if you were just doing it for a hobby, I'm not sure that you get your money's worth out of these devices. The next step for me is a DSLR rig where I'm 
taking really high quality hyperlapses um, and I'm moving towards that. These wise webcams have been fantastic and they've enabled me to jump into this space relatively cheaply and have many, many grows happening at once so I can pump out the most content that I possibly can for you guys. Moving to the better quality is the next logical step. However, it is limiting in the sense that I won't be able to have as many grows going with, you know, six of these cameras because they're fairly expensive cameras. But for the grows that I'm really excited about or uh, I, I just wanna present a really nice picture to you guys, I'm gonna start using the DSLR with the time-lapse rig. And these Edelkrone devices actually have a built-in time-lapse shutter timer. So I don't need to spend money on an actual time-lapse shutter timer for these cameras. So another use that I've found for the head one is as a turntable uh, for any subject that you're time-lapsing. Uh, so for example, here is the Terra planter on the turntable and it's just turning. And as you turn it incrementally, you can time-lapse that turn. Likewise, I've had hydroponic systems on top of the HEB-1, turning the hydroponic system as the time-lapse camera it remains still on a tripod so I can get that turning hyperlapse of the plant system. And I'm gonna to continue to experiment with different ways of using all of these devices to make new and exciting hyperlapse scenarios. So that brings me to the Grow Light giveaway. So I will now encourage you to go out and make your own hyperlapses, time lapses of the plants and systems that you've made at home and then post them to the Hucho's Reddit page and the Hucho's Facebook group. They're both linked in the description of the video and I'll do a video showcasing all of those time-lapse and hyperlapse grows and I'll announce my favorite and I'll send them a grow light. Thanks for watching. Happy hydroponicking. Like and subscribe and all the rest. And I'll see you next time on Hucho's.